Practically everybody uses Wi-Fi these days. In fact, you probably use multiple Wi-Fi networks in any given day, from the one at your home, to the one at your job, to the coffee shop across the street that you use to torrent movies over. But there is more to your Wi-Fi than just magical internet signals that are coming from the box that Comcast drilled into the wall. There's actually different security settings that you might not have set or that your router might not even have if it's super old, and this makes you vulnerable to hacking attacks or at least having your home network become the new coffee shop Wi-Fi that people in the neighborhood are gonna torrent their movies over. So let's go over some of the obvious security stuff first, your Wi-Fi password. So it shouldn't be something super basic that anybody can guess or something that's super short that can be easily brute forced. Use a strong Wi-Fi password. Even if you don't normally use good passwords, like maybe you're one of these people who's like, oh, how can I remember a complex password for all of my accounts? It's not like password managers exist and I can just remember one password. Definitely make sure you use a good one for your Wi-Fi because it's not even like you're gonna be putting it in that often. It's only whenever you're going to connect a new device to your Wi-Fi and you're not doing that that often. Uh, once you enter it once, a device is going to remember it forever until you reset it. And this especially goes for your Wi-Fi's admin panel, which you'll probably use even less than connecting a new device to your Wi-Fi. But it's very important to change this because it's almost always admin admin or admin password. It's very trivial to just look up what the default one for a router is and then for someone to try to log into it. And if someone is on your network, they can literally brick your router just with access to the admin panel by trying to give it a firmware update and then interrupting it. So you could just write the passwords to your admin panel and to your Wi-Fi on a sticky note and put it right on the router. I mean, don't use a super simple one like this because writing something down like that is pretty stupid. And I guess just make sure that you don't have weirdos looking in your window at your router with binoculars, but if that's happening, you honestly have bigger problems than somebody hacking your network. So now let's talk about encryption. And this is actually what encryption looks like in real life inside of your Wi-Fi cables. I'm just kidding though, it looks more like this. Uh, now this section of the video is going to be a little bit outdated as time goes on. So, you know, in 10 years, if my YouTube channel doesn't get deleted, uh, new encryption standards will exist. So always use the latest and greatest. But let's look at some of the different options that you have for encryption on your router. So WEP is the oldest and it is the worst encryption that you could use. It stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy, but despite its name, it's nowhere near as private as a wired connection. Uh, so WEP does provide some encryption, but there's a few problems with it. So first, it uses RC4, which is an outdated encryption algorithm. But to be fair, AES, the advanced encryption standard that almost everyone uses, hasn't been invented yet. Uh, the biggest problem, though, is the size of the encryption key. So most resources are going to tell you that WEP uses a 64-bit key which is already pretty weak, but in reality, WEP is using a 40-bit key and then a 24-bit random number that's used as an initialization vector. Uh, the problem is the 24 bits, that doesn't really get you a lot of variety in your IV, only about 17 million possibilities or so, which uh, might have been fine for much older computers, but this can easily be cracked on modern hardware. And the initialization vector is also sent in plain text and it repeats after a few thousand packets. So if you capture enough packets, then you can just figure out the IV that way. Uh, so WEP definitely should not be used to secure your Wi-Fi. WPA fixed most of the problems of WEP by introducing TKIP and 256-bit keys. But the first iteration of WPA it still had some issues. It was still using the RC4. Uh, now, unless your router is really old, like 15 years old, you probably at least have WPA2. I think these days, most routers also default to using WPA2, so you kind of have to go out of your way to use one of the older, really bad encryptions. Uh, now, WPA2 is not without fault, it's not perfect, it does have vulnerabilities. The most famous one probably being the crack vulnerability uh, that was discovered in 2016, and then I think uh, most people caught on to it in like 2017, I think that's when it was in, uh, officially released. 
Uh, and I won't go into a lot of details about this vulnerability because it's a bit beyond the scope of this video, but it basically takes advantages of flaws in the four-way handshake that your device does when it connects to a router over WPA2. There's also a vulnerability called Crook, which causes certain Wi-Fi devices to use all zero encryption keys for part of their uh, communication. But this only affects unpatched Broadcom and Cypress devices. So I think it can be patched with a firmware update. And that's another general uh, security thing you should do with your router and with your Wi-Fi is always make sure that you're using the most up-to-date firmware. Since WPA2 was recently discovered to have some serious issues, WPA3 was rolled out in 2018, and it does bring some security improvements. One of the big ones is the replacement of pre-shared keys with simultaneous authentication of equals, or SAE, which is a much more secure way to do that initial key exchange. Remember, that's the area that Crack focused on, that's the area that it was exploiting. Uh, so with WPA3, we are also seeing protected management frames becoming mandatory, whereas with WPA2, this was an optional setting. Protected management frames are designed to prohibit attacks such as a disconnect, a honeypot, uh, or evil twin attacks, with the disconnect or disassociative attacks being the most common. Uh, so basically what goes on with that scenario is you're disrupting the Wi-Fi signal of a device, uh, there's all kinds of ways to do that with interference. Uh, you know, maybe you know if a microwave is on, that can be enough to disrupt a Wi-Fi signal. Uh, so you disrupt the signal and then you trick the person's computer, the victim's computer, into connecting to an evil twin, which is really just a router that the hacker is operating, or it can be a computer that's acting as a router. And it's going to be configured to look like it's the real router. It's going to have the same SSID and all of that good stuff. Uh, so then when the victim's machine connects to it, it starts trying to authenticate as if it is the real router, and then you can capture information about the key that way. With WPA2, it's also possible to capture some of the encrypted packets that are being sent over the air. Uh, there's, in fact, really nothing that you can do to stop someone from doing this. I mean, it's possible with any type of wireless communication. Uh, and then even with something like Ethernet, right, if the packets are contained inside of a wire, it still is possible to tap that wire, right? That's what wire tapping is, essentially. Uh, but anyway, once a hacker has these packets, like it's much easier to do to capture it over the air because you just have to be within range. They can then take those encrypted packets home and then they can just brute force it with some kind of powerful password cracking rig uh, and then get it in a matter of minutes or a matter of hours. But SAE, it makes it so that the hacker only has one guess at the password. And every time they want to make another attempt to crack it, they have to go back to the network that they are attacking and then capture packets all over again. Uh, there's also forward secrecy that you get with WPA3, and this prevents you from being able to snoop on all of a user's traffic, even if you do manage to crack the code. So if your router is more than four years old, you might actually want to start looking into getting a new one, because at this point, the WPA2 vulnerabilities, they're probably going to start getting into script kitty territory. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's already a Metasploit module that's available for crack, which means it's pretty much as simple to use as just firing up Kali Linux and then firing up Metasploit. But at the very least, go through, you know, review your Wi-Fi settings and make sure that you're at least using the most secure settings that your router provides to prevent your home network from becoming somebody else's secondary network.